What's going on guys and girls, it's Ghost Robo and today is a big day because in effect, it's kind of like a new console generation or at least a half generation because the PlayStation 4 Pro is here and we're gonna open it up and see what it's all about and compare it to pretty much every other system that you can get. This is the PlayStation 4 Pro. It comes in at 399 US dollars and it looks like a sandwich of PlayStation 4 regulars. We're gonna open it up, see how big it really is, see what it's like, compare it to these other guys, and then start checking out some games. But first, let's dive into the box, because that's where every story begins, with the box, and that little sticky bit that you have to unbox in order to unbox it. And inside, we find a white box. So you got the blue cover, and you slip that up. On the back, they show uh, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, Mass Effect Andromeda, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Watch Dogs 2. A game that's out, a game that's almost out, and two games that are coming in the spring, uh, early 2017. Now, here's the PS4 Pro box. It's a big box. It's a heavy box. This is no small uh, little dude here. And inside the box, I've never seen one of these in person, never held one, so it will be really interesting. Quick start guide to the PlayStation 4 Pro. And uh, inside, we will find all that we need, and it will have some things for us, and more importantly, let's check out the box itself. So we're gonna get in here and see, is that it? Okay, there's also a uh, little best place to play thing, and this is the PlayStation 4 Pro holding right here. Only comes in black currently. Uh, free trial for PlayStation Now and PlayStation Plus. And it highlights on the box here, spectacular graphics, enhanced gameplay, one unified gaming community, extraordinary entertainment, up to 4K streaming, 4K auto upscaling for video content, and then the enhanced visuals that's not native 4K uh, for the games. It's got a terabyte of hard drive space, which is a nice little uptick um, from the original. I have a two terabyte in my PS4, so it's a step down from what I'm used to, but still it's a nice amount of storage. Let's dive into the box itself. All right, so it's smaller than I expected it to be, which is good, I think, because this thing was looking mighty massive in all the pre-release pictures, and here it is. It's actually, actually not so heavy, not so bad. Welcome to the future, the PlayStation 4 Pro generation, what is this, 8.5, I guess? Halfway between the PS4 and PS5, if we ever get one. You got your two USBs in the front. You got your disk drive over there. You've got a button for eject. There's a physical button similar to the uh, PlayStation 4 Slim with physical buttons and a physical power button on the other side. On the back, uh, you'll see here if we get nice up and close. Can you get in there? You got all your traditional ports. Okay, okay, power port. No power brick still, thank God. HDMI, ethernet. Uh, what else we got over here? We've got a USB port in the back. Looks like an aux port, which I think is for VR, which is very nice. And uh, away we go. A shiny PlayStation logo on the top, a very clean matte black finish. A shiny PlayStation logo on the bottom, and then the legs or the feet of this system uh, are in fact the very, uh, very traditional square, circle, triangle, X buttons, which is kind of nice. Um, and it looks like this... I'm guessing this, yeah, there's a, the, the PlayStation screw is right there. PlayStation does a great job of making it super easy to uh, remove and replace and, and upgrade hard drives, and the screw is right here. So I believe this is where you will uh, pull out the hard drive. If you do want to take it to that two or three or four terabyte level, um, you can do so. But one terabyte is a good, a good size. So that is the PlayStation 4 Pro. Uh, we'll do the comparison in a second. It does look kind of like a sandwich, but it's much smaller and more um, sleek and sexy than I expected. For some reason, it looked a lot to me like it was a lot thicker and a lot more chunky. But in person, it's really not that chunky, and it doesn't really look that much worse than a PlayStation 4. Um, on the side, you'll also see there are some carved out square, circle, triangle, X buttons. Uh, and on this side, you've got all the uh, little uh, company insignias for what all you got on your HDMI, Dolby Digital, blah, 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 blah. Um, so in here, in our side box, um, we've got the power cord, which is, you know, another power cord. It does have a bigger power port, more of a computer uh, desktop PC style power port. If you recall, the regular PlayStation has a very little one. Um, this one is a much bigger power port, uh, so I don't know if that supplies more power or what they need for that. It does also come with your traditional crappy headset that I guess you can use or not. I just end up not using them at all. Um, and then what else we got in here? Let's see. It looks like... We've got a nice charging cord, so that's the micro USB to charge the controller, which is right here. Um, and this should be the new DualShock 4 model that has the, uh, the little bit of supposedly durability and then the light bar that pops through the top. And you can't see it right now on, but I can see that there is a gap in the uh, 
the touchpad where the light will come through. So this is the newest model of the DualShock 4 that debuted with the PlayStation 4 Slim and does allow for that light bar to pop through the front to give you uh, alerts on what player you are or things in the game that change based on uh, you know that lighting. So that's that controller. And then the last thing in the box is the HDMI. So I stand corrected. This aux port is for the PlayStation camera, not for the VR. You still need the breakout box, which stinks. But alas, what are we going to do about it? This is the PlayStation 4 Pro, and now we're going to compare it to the rest of the PlayStation 4 family. So PS4 Pro here, again, a little bit chunky, kind of sandwich looking, but very sleek and small and lightweight in comparison to what I was expecting. Still heavier than the rest, still bigger than the rest, but not so bad for hopefully enhanced power. And I've been hearing and seeing good things about people's uh, experience with PS4 Pro enhanced games. Now, granted, I don't think it's fair to really give a 100% review of those graphical possibilities until games that were designed with that in mind already come out. So when Horizon or when Mass Effect Andromeda or games that were built from the ground up with that in mind, then we can judge it fully. Getting upgrades to Last of Us Remastered, Uncharted 4, things like that is great, but I don't think it really reveals maybe 100% of the true potential of the PS4 Pro. Nonetheless, I've got some things for you. This is a PlayStation 4 regular, okay? This is one of the OG consoles. It's got the shine and the matte. And as you can see, ports and all that good stuff everywhere, and the good old uh, touch buttons. Now, here is the PlayStation 4 regular PS4 Pro frontal comparison. As you can see, it is a bigger system, but not by much, okay? You line this thing up, and it's got a little bit of a height advantage or disadvantage, however you want to look at it. If I sit them on top of each other and do a sort of stack for you, you'll see that it doesn't really look all that much bigger. I mean, you're, you are getting about a half an inch on the side here. I'll, I'll show you so you can really see. Uh, if you line these up exactly, there's about a half inch extra on the PS4 Pro on the side um, of extra space. So it is a little bit longer, a little bit wider. Um, in terms of depth though, it's nearly identical. Again, you know, maybe there's a little gap on the back end. Not sure you can see that there. There's a tiny gap here. I can fit my finger there. Um, but the PlayStation 4 has the overhang. So it's almost Depth-wise, it's, it's even less than width-wise. So really, they managed to cram a lot more power into a box that isn't that much bigger. And I think it's deceptive to the eye because if you look at the two panels here, the front panel, uh, the top front panel, and the bottom front panel, they are thicker than the panels, the three panels on this. And so three panels, all you have to go on is what your original PlayStation 4 looks like. So you're thinking, man, three chunky panels, that's going to be like a thick freaking sandwich. But they're much thinner. If you look at this compared to the regular PlayStation 4, you've got much thinner frontal panels, and therefore it really isn't that much taller or that much larger than you might come to expect. Now, the interesting comparison uh, is the much more recently released PlayStation 4 Slim. And again, I went with the all black model so you could really get an exact idea. Now, the PlayStation 4 Slim is a nice slim console. I don't find it to be as sleek and sexy as the Xbox One Slim, but it is notably smaller than the PlayStation 4 Pro now. Uh, it was smaller than the PlayStation 4 regular, and obviously, given this is a little bit bigger, it's much smaller than that. If we stack them up directly on each other carefully like so, we can show you uh, that there is quite a bit of a gap on both the top and the sides. So you got a width, height, and depth discrepancy between these two. Now, a very interesting look uh, that I want to make for you is if we stack all of these together and give you the PlayStation 4 uh, sandwich extraordinaire, this is an experience that can only be had at Ghost Robo Inc. The restaurant uh, menu only serves this today only. Uh, if we line these up <laughs> ever so carefully like so, you've got one giant PlayStation 4 tower of power or tower of terror, however you wanna look at it. And these are three consoles that Sony has released within just a few years for the PlayStation 4 brand. The PlayStation 4 Pro on the bottom, the PlayStation 4 regular OG model in the middle, and the PlayStation 4 Slim, the new regular, on the top. It's interesting to look and just see how they have modified things. This is, by the way, quite the hefty stack. Um, you can see how things have changed. You've got, again, three chunkers on the bottom being the Pro, and then the uh, two in the middle being the uh, regular, and then the two on the top being the slim. And what it shows you is that that regular is pretty hefty itself. And so they did a nice job with the Pro of maximizing uh, the space they had. Now, some people will argue that they should have pushed farther in terms of specs, they should have pushed harder in terms of teraflops, they should have waited and gained more of an advantage over the PlayStation 4 regular. But again, we have to see what PS4 Pro can really do. We have to use it on our 4K HDR enabled TVs and 
see what the difference is like. Compare it and wait for those games like Horizon Zero Dawn, Mass Effect Andromeda, and whatever else is coming, God of War, uh, you know, Days Gone, things like that, and see how they really take advantage of the true power of this system before making any sort of final judgment. Now, just because I thought it would be interesting, again, let's say goodbye to our Slim and our regular PS4. Thanks for joining us on the show today, guys. You've been wonderful. Um, I wanted to show you the Xbox One S because this is Microsoft's latest console. And here it is in comparison to the PlayStation 4 Pro. I've said that I think the Xbox One S is my favorite console model uh, on the market just based purely on aesthetics. Um, and here it is versus the Pro. Now again, they aren't that much different in size. Height wise, you know, it's a little bit, it's pretty much the same. Width wise is where you're gonna see again, pretty much the same, okay, basically can't even see the PlayStation 4 Pro. It is depth that you're gonna get the difference. So the Xbox One S is nowhere near as deep as the PlayStation 4 Pro. But again, this is a small console versus a, quote, half-gen step console. So you expect it to be uh, notably um, bigger. And in fact, it's just moderately bigger. So I'm pretty, pretty pleased and impressed with that. Now, I also brought for you uh, an Xbox One uh, regular so you could see the powerhouse that is this giant monster and how that compares. This has always been a hefty, big boy of a console, and it still is. In all ways and angles and faces you turn it, it's a large one. Now, compared to the PlayStation 4 Pro, now you're like, dang, maybe these guys are the original two consoles because they're two hefty, heavy beasts of power. And this one really is now the gold standard for consoles. Xbox Scorpio coming out fall 2017 will inevitably once again reset the standard for what the top tier gaming console is. But as of right now, it's the PlayStation 4 Pro. And uh, it is, you know, if you stack these on top of each other like so, you can see that they're both two big boxes, but the Xbox One is a lot taller, uh, it is longer, and it is about and the, the PlayStation 4 has it on depth. The PlayStation 4 is a deeper console, uh, but every other way, the Xbox One is bigger. So PS4 Pro really is not going to be setting back in terms of space usage in your entertainment center, in your bedroom, in your living room, wherever you put it. Uh, now, the last thing I want to show you, just because I thought it would be funny, is I received the uh, smallest console I've ever got uh, the other day, which is the NES Mini. So you've got the NES Mini, which, of course, I know, has very limited usage and is something from the past. But look at this. <laughs> Compared to this, I just think this is really funny. These are the two consoles that released this month, same day. Totally different ways to play, totally different power, totally different eras, and totally different sizes. You could stack like one, two, three, four, five, six of these on the face of the PS4 Pro. But, you know, that doesn't matter. I just thought it was kind of funny. So this is the PlayStation 4 Pro. Let's christen it into the Ghost Robo family. Give it a big, loving welcome. Mwah. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. So, guys and girls, that's the PlayStation 4 Pro. We've unboxed it. We've compared it. I will be recording more gameplay videos. Let me know if you have a specific title you'd like to see. And, obviously, we'll hold our final judgment until true titles that take advantage of its power, like Horizon, like Mass Effect, and like whatever else comes out for Sony in 2017, are released to really pass a final judgment. It comes in at $400, the most expensive console on the market, also the most powerful. I think in terms of an aesthetic and size uh, analysis, it comes in really, really hot and really strong. I'm impressed with the size, I'm impressed they've been able to keep it small, and it really isn't as big or as monstrous or as chunky as it looked in some photos. In terms of the graphical intensity and upgrade, it's still very hard for me to tell. I like how it looks, I think it looks pretty, but unless you're gonna play games side by side, or unless you're gonna wait for a, a slew of titles that really take full advantage of it in a huge way, I'm not sure this is worth the current upgrade. If you don't own a PlayStation 4, then you might as well get in on the highest floor. But if you're looking to save money, I don't think there's anything wrong with buying a PlayStation 4 regular. It still plays all the same games. It still does so in glorious fashion. They look great. It plays great. Same controller, same multiplayer, same everything, right? If you're really a video file and you want that Netflix 4K and you want that, you know, HDR lighting and you want that top of the line experience, if you are that super hardcore, then this is the system you're gonna go for regardless of what I say. But I don't think a final review or final judgment can be passed really until we see what this thing can really do. And maybe not even until Xbox releases their Scorpio. This is the first half-step console we've ever seen to market, at least in my lifetime. And what do they, what do they do from here? Where do they go? How do they really stand up? How do they really, you know, compare? Will the Scorpio disappoint? Will the Scorpio prove that this was a disappointment? Will this prove that the Scorpio is a disappointment? We have to kind of wait and see. And so I think a metered response and reaction to the PS4 Pro is what is in store. And so I can't really fully recommend this as a purchase or as an avoidance right now. 
that's gonna come in the future and I will deliver that verdict as soon as I can. Right now though, I like it from an aesthetic standpoint, I like what it's doing from a graphic standpoint, I just can't tell you if this is a great use of your money. That's for you to decide. If you wanna be on the cutting edge, if you wanna be preemptive in your preparation for Horizon and for Mass Effect and for whatever else uh, Sony releases, if you're really excited to see Uncharted 4 in all of its potential glory, or if you're excited to see The Last Guardian in all of its potential glory, or Final Fantasy 15, then you know this is the system for you, but I think that's a very small subset of people. The one terabyte hard drive is a nice addition. The size of the box does not really limit or uh, affect it negatively in any way, so I like it from that standpoint. I just think right now it's hard to know if the power that they put in this box, if the pro title, does it deserve that price tag and does it deserve that pro title? We can't know yet and we'll have to wait and see. For now, I like it, I think it's cool, and the rest I await in the future. So thank you guys and girls so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Give it a big thumbs up. The comparison is pretty cool. I kind of like that PlayStation 4 Tower of Power. Maybe I'll just stack my systems like that and look like I've got this monstrosity on my desk because that was kind of like a technological monstrosity. Goodness gracious. That tower, baby. But you guys are the real heroes here. So thanks so much for watching. Destiny, I love you all. Always got you with those latest unboxings, latest gameplay, and latest opinions, analysis, and reviews. I'll be back next time. Till that time, I'll have a test today. Thanks so much for watching. Drink so much out. We are done with hardware releases for 2017. In terms of new hardware, you saw the Xbox One S, the PlayStation 4 Slim, the Nintendo Mini, and this guy. Next year, though, that Switch is coming at you, so it's going to be good. Until that time, drink so much out. Thanks, guys. I love you. We'll see you all later. What's going on, Ghost Robo? What's going on, guys and girls? It's Ghost Robo, and... Oh boy, it's been quite a day.